Welcome, everybody, to the Three Way Podcast Show. I am your host with the most Los Public Enemy 59. Right next to me, I got JD, the man. <laughs> the man. And behind the magic of it all, uh, JRX4X Eli. Say what's up, guys. Oh, whoa. Oh, oh. oh, I like that hat. <laughs> It's not going to be a good show. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, as you all know, we're doing the show online. You know, uh, Corona has affected everyone. We're still trying to keep ourselves in our social distancing ways. So uh, we're just taking some precautions. Hopefully we can return to back to normal soon. But uh, we got a jam-packed show. You would think not a lot of news would happen this week, but that uh, that is – the total opposite of what happened. Uh, so we are going to start off with pop. 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 Hey. Um, I'm getting better. <laughs> in, <laughs> you are, you are. Uh, you know, uh, reacting to how times are going right now, a slew of movies, uh, TV shows, well, not TV shows, movies are being uh, postponed or uh, canceled or just, Put on VOD, as you can see by NBC, uh, they decided to go the uh, on-demand route and put mm-hmm. their movies uh, on their uh, app, uh, where you could just pay a certain amount and get yourself the movies that were supposed to release, uh, you know, on the theaters uh, this month. So a couple of movies I know about is Onward. Yeah. Um, onward. What else we got in there? <clears throat> Uh, as of right now, uh, here, let me pull up the, the article from Vulture. They talk about it and have like the little release dates on there. Uh, uh, let's see. A couple of the movies that are now streaming. Frozen 2 is on Disney+. Plus. Uh, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, uh, of course, also on Disney+. Plus. Uh, on March 20th, uh, which is, uh, what, yesterday, uh, Emma came out, The Hunt, The Invisible Man, Onward. Uh, Onward's coming out on April 3rd on Disney+. Plus. All these movies uh, basically were supposed to be, yeah, in theaters, but because, of course, of what's going on, they're not. So uh, one of one of the companies like NBC Universal is actually putting them on demand for twenty dollars. Now, yeah. I don't I don't have a problem with that. Twenty dollars is fine because they they were expecting to make something in theaters, but of course, mm-hmm. everything's closed right now. Onward. What else is good? What else is good? What about Bloodshot? Do you know what's gonna happen with Bloodshot? Uh, it says right here, Bloodshot, Bloodshot managed a short theatrical appearance beginning on March 13th and will be made available for digital purchase starting Tuesday, March 24th. Okay. So that one you can um, actually buy. Okay. See, I'm, I'm down with that. If I can own it, if I'm going to pay it and own it and I can watch it. I was kind of hyped for Bloodshot because, uh, yeah, it looked like, um, mm-hmm. you know, like the story was good. The graphics are cool. So I was actually interested in that one. Um, <clears throat> when you said Rise of Skywalker, uh, that's going to be just on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, I mean, uh, from here, from Vulture, it says, The final chapter in the Skywalker, uh, Skywalker saga was brought to Disney+, Plus a few days ahead of its scheduled digital release. So it's just a few days ahead. It's not a big Oh, light, light so you got to pay for it nonetheless. But, yeah, yeah. yeah it, it's... It's coming to Disney Plus sooner than later, basically. Yeah, but I mean, Disney Plus has got a whole lot of money. It's, I mean, you're thinking in the terms of, uh, you know, Frozen Two and Skywalker coming through. That's gonna be like what, twelve bucks, maybe thirteen bucks a month for two mm-hmm. big movies yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's actually not a bad deal for that part. It's not. It's not. It's really not. Um, mm-hmm. uh, the uh, uh, movie also another one I was interested in, uh, The Lovebirds. With Kamel Najani and Issa Rae. Issa Rae, uh, you know, looking uh, you know, kind of fresh in there. Hey! Uh, it's right to your wife is behind you! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> that actually looks pretty good. Uh, that actually was canceled, uh, the, full, the release. And it looks like Netflix has picked it up. So it's going to be coming out on Netflix. Yeah. No release date, but it's, it's rumored that it might be April 3rd because that was the original release date anyways. Uh, so that's the one we just get for paying our Netflix, you know, 13 bucks a month. You get a movie that was supposed to come out, and, yeah. and now you can catch it for free. Well, not for free, but for 13 bucks a month. It's not bad either. Right. So, yeah, I mean, in spite of all the stuff going on, uh, you know, they're, you know, these companies are kind of, you know, they're getting their money. But at the same time, they're kind of looking out for us and giving that stuff at home. So 
I think it's a win-win. If you want to spend the money, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. So exactly. it's a win-win for everybody. Right, exactly. Um, also, uh, talking about Netflix, uh, to our viewers that don't know, there's a little functionality on Netflix on the desktop version where uh, if you, you, know, you have your friends that you can't really hang out with, you can still watch movies together on Netflix. Uh, it's called a viewing party. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what is this about? There's sure. Uh, let me pull up uh, the article again from actually this, is, this time it's from Polygon. Uh, of course, as we all know, uh, we can't go to theaters. We can't go hang out socially like in, in IRL. So one of the things that like that's been popping up on the Internet is how to like hang out basically online. I mean, of course, you got uh, social spaces like, I mean, like Facebook, Twitter, uh, Twitch, even Mixer, all that other uh, fun stuff. But in case like you wanted to be more like, hey, I, we just we just want to hang out and watch a movie, whatever. Well, with Netflix, they actually have an option where it's called Next Netflix Party. Uh, how do you use it? According to Polygon, if you ever wanted to watch Criminal Minds while chatting with a group of uh, remote friends after Jason Alexander's ridiculous hair in season four episode of Masterpiece, then this is the extension for you. Next, Netflix Party has been popping up on TikTok, on Twitter, and is definitely the easiest one of the one of the easiest way to use Netflix. Since after installing the Chrome extension, it's a Chrome extension, ladies and gentlemen. You can do it right in the streaming services browser. Want to watch the new furry anime uh, Beastars? Actually, go watch Beastars. It's like a rated R uh, uh, Zootopia. It's actually pretty pretty nasty, pretty good. Uh, goof around to spy kids and maybe have a serious movie night and finally watch The Irishman. You can do it with Netflix Party. So it's pretty simple. Basically, just have Chrome, <laughs> the Chrome browser uh, and then install install the Netflix uh, 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 extension. Uh, from, extension, yeah, from, yeah, yeah. From the Chrome extensions, and boom, you just basically get everybody uh, link, uh, send them the link to the to your to your uh, to your to your access of Netflix, and everybody jumps in, and you know, it, there's a little chat one, a box that comes up, and you can hang out and ch talk and watch a movie or TV show, whatever. Yeah, it's actually real simple. If you guys are in Chrome, just type in Netflix Party, and it'll pull right up the extension you need. Yeah, it's super you can just simple. Download right there. there so. Are you guys gonna use this? I might. I actually have some friends that are on Netflix, and, I, and you know we can we can watch stuff like this too. So that'd be kind of cool. Actually, yeah, I I wanted to do something like this, uh, not just for Netflix, but for other things too. Uh, I was thinking about doing something on instead of doing like a community game night for my stream. Uh, I was thinking about doing like a like a hangout and watch party thing. It'll probably be on our Discord <clears throat> server. So if anybody, if you guys have Discord or are interested even to talk about uh, further conversate about uh, what we talk about here on the podcast, uh, what any of us do outside the podcast. Go ahead and join our Discord. We're really active in there, and it's like probably the best way to like communicate with any one of us there. Yeah. So, uh, hey, a couple of tips. You know, you're stuck at home, not much to do. You can't see your family. You can't see your friends. There's a good, a good alternative, right? Um, yeah. Oh, just, uh, and, just a reminder. I'm sorry. Uh, the link for the Discord is in the description of the YouTube channel of the YouTube video for this boom. one. Boom, boom. Uh, also, uh, there's been some more information on the Bleach anime. Yeah, Bleach is coming back, boys. Uh, apparently. Oh, actually, you know what? I used to be really into Bleach, but man, like after like a certain part in the anime, I was kind of like, all right, bro, that's enough. <laughs> but uh, I have never seen Bleach, so you know, you know, know. yeah. The first couple of seasons were good, but then it just gets redonk. Uh. So yeah, according to Polygon, uh, Bleach's thousand-year blood war story arc is getting an anime adaptation. Now it's been a couple of years since uh, since Bleach was out, but it, I guess they're they're coming, they're bringing it back. It's been eight years. Last time the anime was out was 2012. Uh, so the debut is supposed to be in 2021. Uh, of course, all the Bleach uh, fandom is uh, hyped. I'm not super duper hyped, but I am interested. Maybe I mean with this all this quarantine stuff, probably catch up with the with the last uh, anime that they had out. Uh, again, it's super long, but you know it is. What mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, Bleach fans, there you go. Uh, <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, uh, I haven't... Next up. Oh yeah. What's I'm up? sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, I just haven't watched anime that much since I was you know younger. But I think the last thing I watched was uh, Ninja Scroll. So. The series. My Hero you know. Academia, man. Come on, you gotta, you gotta jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm rewatching Ronan Warriors, but or, 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 I'm sorry, it was, it's, no, yeah, Ronan Warriors. I'm you know, telling I'm you, watching that. So, JD, but... we can watch that on Discord, bro. I'm telling you. Yeah. 
Because you know what? Well, I couldn't find now it. Now we can Netflix. watch it on Netflix. Yeah, I was about to say I couldn't find it on Netflix. You're gonna have to sh- uh, show me. Oh yeah, it's it's called uh, Samurai Troopers. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I remember you told me it was named something else, but I couldn't find it. I was like, oh, yeah. was it again? Unless they just took it off. It was there a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. But... I'm sorry. All right. Uh, <laughs> next up in uh, next topics are sports. <sighs> Touchdown. It's a home run. Go. Uh, remember, you can't you can't do the, the the cheering thing anymore. Don't there's nobody in the in the stands. Yeah, man. Stands. Sports is canceled. Yeah, bro. you're Stop. right. You're right. You're right. Uh, space swords. So yeah, uh, you would think you know every league is canceled, but damn, we got a lot of stuff going on this week, especially on the NFL side of side of stuff. Uh, NFL free agency kicked off. Everybody was on their phones making moves, um, and a lot of notable uh, moves were made. Uh, Melvin Gordon got signed by the Denver Broncos uh, after a yeah, kind of lackluster year last year. The Denver Broncos think that you know he can make a big difference. They got him. Indianapolis Colts signed Philip Rivers. So this guy, all his career has spent it in, in San Diego, now the LA Chargers, um, mm-hmm. and he's moved on. And the Colts, after having Andrew Luck retire. They've decided to put their chips in with Philip Rivers. Is it going to pan out? I don't know. If anybody can do it, I think it's Philip Rivers. I think the fans are going to like him. He's outspoken. He talks crap. People love that shit. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I think it's a good move for them. I don't really see any other quarterback out there that was uh, kind of more available. Yeah. Except, like, unproven guys. But, yeah, I think it's a good pickup for the Colts. I mean, Teddy, Teddy was out there too, but I guess he got signed by somebody else too. Yeah, yeah, he did. Uh, man, I, I can't. I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, Carolina. So it looks like Cam Newton's about to be traded out of Carolina. That's yeah. the rumor. Uh, still has no one's pulled the trigger. Maybe the asking price is too high. Oh, I I'm mean, sure Cam's the asking price is kind of high. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like you know Cam might might. You know, he's not going anywhere unless, unless he likes it as well. Of course. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, we're awaiting that. But, uh, yeah, um, so Carolina got them. Phillip Rivers got uh, – I mean, Indianapolis got Phillip Rivers. Todd Gurley, released <laughs> by the L.A. Rams. He got fired in his day off. Signed, immediately signed by the uh, Atlanta uh, Falcons less than 24 hours after. Um so I think that's a good move for them. They've been building on their offensive line for a good time now. Mm-hmm. So they they it looks like they've been finally. Look, I mean they've had they've had a good running game, uh, but it looks like they're trying to add another good piece on there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll see how that goes. Uh, okay, so let let's get to some of the good stuff, man. Uh, all that's good. Uh, Tom Brady <laughs> was not re- did not resign with the, the Patriots. Patriots. Uh, he has decided to sign. With the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it looks like it's a two-year deal, All fifty above. million dollars, fifty million dollars. So twenty-five dollars, twenty-five mil per year. It's not Next bad. Stop. <laughs> Tampa Bay. Uh, there's a no-trade clause in there and a non-franchise tag clause. So, yeah, I, I mean, I like the move. I think, hey man, if Patriots aren't gonna pay up, I mean, it's not like they really have anybody else on their squad. So, I mean, whatever. Uh, but if they're not going to pay up, it looks like the, the Patriots have gone all in on their defense. They've done a lot of good defensive moves, but they've already lost. A, they've lost a lot of defensive players. Um, but I think it's a good, a good, a good move for Tom Brady. I mean, the guy wants to keep playing. Yeah. Uh, there's weapons there in the Bucks. Uh, uh, Mike so, Evans. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So uh, they have some good weapons. I could see him having a productive year. It's kind of. Uh, contingent on how that offensive line plays. Oh, bro, listen. Uh, uh, look, the Patriots fucked up. They didn't want to pay him. So he's like, you know what? I'm tired of playing ball with y'all. Always get, always restructuring my contract. Always taking yeah, my yeah, money. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, the guy's it, it giving did. up money. Yeah. The guy's giving up money uh, almost all his career so they could sign better players and compete for a championship, which it, they and, won. And, they, and I was about to say, and it worked out for them. Like they've they've been winning. They ever they've been so consistent for years and years and years. And Tom, I'm pretty sure he's like, you look, I'm I'm reaching the end of my career. You guys are not paying me. I gotta go somewhere they're gonna pay me. But the beautiful thing is is that 
not only like did he sign with Tampa, but all of a sudden you got all these other players like, hey, let's go to Tampa. Agent, get your ass <laughs> stop working. Get your ass to work. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Uh, what do you think, JD? Well, I mean, I think you guys know my feelings on a lot of this. I think if it's if it's a whole money issue, I'm just not uh, I just can't support it just because, you know, it's it, – guys, these guys get paid enough as it is, mm-hmm. you know, and they sit there and say, oh, well, you're not paying me $20 million. Let me go somewhere else. It's just, you know – if, if it's a whole issue of, you know, they're not treating him right, they're not supporting him, they're not doing all that kind of stuff, hey, I'm all for, I'm all for it. You know, if you got – companies not standing behind you, definitely don't stick with them. But extra money just in, in his pocket, especially right now, and you know, we get a lot of people out of jobs, stuff like that. I just can't get behind that kind of a move uh, personally. So, I mean, but you know what? Um, if, if he's going to be happy there, you know, again, this is my own personal opinion. He, he you know, it's his life. Of he course. With it, but, you know, of course. Hey. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think, like, it's true. He's given up a lot of money throughout his career in his prime. He's never been, like, the highest paid QB in the league because he's always decided to take less for the team, and it's worked right. out. Now, when he's on his end, you know, yeah, you you guys really aren't competing for a Super Bowl anymore. I mean, the squad around him really wasn't that great. I mean, all year they were trying to find a, a wide receiver. I mean, they made so many moves trying to find a wide receiver. It never worked out. Mm. Um, I think he's like, hey, man, pay me. Like, I've, I've given up enough money throughout my career. Pay me now. They didn't want to do it. He's not going to get low balled. He's, he's Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback of all time. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it would have well, been nice you know, if he went. Greatest quarterback of all time, period. Um, it would have been nice for him to retire as a Patriot and end his career there, you know, that legacy. But I don't think this move affects that legacy. Oh, no, he's uh, forever really. a Patriot no matter what. Yeah, true. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a shame. But, I mean, he's doing – he wants to continue playing and uh, he wants to be valued at, at what he thinks he should be valued. And Tampa Bay is willing to do it. And Tampa Bay needs him because – because yeah. Tampa Bay has all the weapons in the world, but that quarterback just was throwing interception after interception. Yeah, his sorry, first Winston. career pass was an interception, and his last career pass for the Bucks was an interception. So, yep. uh, yeah. Uh, his, what uh, what is happening to James Winston? Is he still in the in, uh, on that team? As of right now, the guy is still on that squad. Uh, but or his contract might have ended. I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not 100 sure. <laughs> then, uh, he's going second string. So who's replacing yeah. uh, Tommy in in uh, New England? That's a good question. That's uh, not really. They, they, what had I, that, I they had that one quarterback. Oh my God, what's his name? The one that was playing for him for a while when he uh, got suspended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot um, his name. Yeah, I don't know, man. I need to look because the the. Because they've given up. Oh, oh, Jared Stidham is next man up for Patriots after Tom Brady. Oh, okay. What do they have at QB? So as of right now, it's Jared Stidham. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> so uh, obviously that might be changing oh, in the near future. Uh, there's a lot of QBs. Uh, well, like some QBs that they could possibly trade for. They might be going for someone in the draft. I yeah, don't know. You know how like good be- Belichick is. Yeah. They find those fifth round picks that turn out to be consistent players so we'll oh see oh my god jared is a rookie bro All right, now uh, now last <laughs> uh, now on to the worst trade of the offseason so, so far oh man um, don't don't you don't need the loop for this one this one was pretty bad man yeah i don't i don't okay so the houston texans and bill o'brien the bill o'brien's you know, JP's not here, so let me represent the Bill O'Briens. The Houston Bill O'Briens have traded away the best player wide receiver in the league. The, the best, best player, player in their squad. The best receiver in the league. Best receiver in the league, the like no best doubt. In his prime. In his prime. They've traded away DeAndre Hawkins to the Arizona Cardinals. For a bag of peanuts. For- <laughs> for a second round pick and David Johnson, who hasn't really played a full season in years. Jesus. It, and one ha- and what has incited anger the Texans fan base to the point where there's a trending fire Bill O'Brien hashtag on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Like this guy <laughs> this this trade has hurt the 
the Texans fans for sure has hurt the team. No one out there I've heard of has approved or thought this is a good trade. On the same day, Stefan Diggs was traded from the Vikings to the Bills for a first-round pick. Mm -hmm. Stefan Diggs. Later that day. I don't know, man. I think this is like the pull... Pen penultium? What, what? How was that word? The what word? Whatever. It's, it's the <laughs> ultimate... I'm not sure what you're trying to say. I have no idea what he's trying to say. Is that English? It's the ultimate like, wrongdoing that Bill O'Brien has done to the Houston Texans. It seems like... He's an insider, like a, he's doing an inside job for another team and just trying to dismantle the oh, Texans. Is what kind of it seems like? I see what you mean. Is he getting? Is he getting like Ooh. paid by another team out there? Like, there's no way you can make Whoa. this trade and think it was good. Uh, there was an uh, interview that they did with the an ESPN show. I forgot what it's called with uh, with Mike Greenberg. Get up. Yeah. Yeah. Get up. And on this on this show, they had uh, oh my god, what's his name? The the dude from the Cowboys. I can't believe it. Michael Irving. Michael Irvin, who had a conversation with D Hop. Now he said at first that he asked him, like, hey, you know, what happened? How you feeling? He's like, you know what? You know, it's all good, blah, blah, blah. Moving on. And, you know, basically keep staying on the high road. And then he asked him again yeah. later. He's like, hey, come on, bro. What happened? He's like, you know what? Billy O pulled me in a in a private conversation. He said He's the first things that came out of his mouth that I, that that everything that was going on around me and how I was in command of the locker room reminded him of Aaron Hernandez. And I was like, holy shit, you don't say that, bro. What the hell was that? And not only did he say did he start that meeting by telling D-Hop that. But then later on, he started saying that he had, he was having issues with uh, D Hop's baby mamas because you know my man he, he pull out game is weak. He catch ball, but he can't pull out. But anyways, he has multiple uh, baby mamas, and they were showing up. And Billy O doesn't like that, and he tried to conversate that with him. Now I don't know exactly the content of the way it was said, how he said it, what exactly he said. So I I don't want to go balls deep into Billy O, but honestly, you just don't say that type of shit to that dude. I'm just saying, like, why bring – first of all, why are you bringing Aaron Hernandez into the conversation, a convict, a murder? What does that have to do with DeAndre Hopkins? Second, players bring their families to, to practice, to, to games, to the locker rooms all the time. Why are you pointing out this guy is personal? I mean, that's not your business, man. Um, I think my problem – and obviously there were rumors that in the locker room, Bill O'Brien felt like DeAndre had too much influence. That's basically the gist of it. Yeah. Bill O'Brien doesn't want anyone else to influence his team but him himself. Right. So he took it upon himself to get rid of him. And that's what he did. When you're GM and you're a coach, you have all that power. First of all, Bill O'Brien doesn't deserve that power. Nope. You haven't won anything. No rings. You you haven't done shit to deserve those that power. Freaking Belichick deserves it. The guy has... A fistful of rings and a finger. Like, I don't get it. And send another one from the Giants as an assistant. So the guy the guy deserves to have that power, right? The guy mm -hmm. knows what he's doing. Bill O'Brien hasn't done shit. Excuse my French. Like, <laughs> so it's just mind-blowing that, first of all, Cal McNair, the owner now of the, of the team, um, has given this power to Bill O'Brien. First of all, it's his fault for giving that power to someone unproven. Second, Bill O'Brien putting personal feelings ahead of, of the team and giving away players for for nothing. I mean, there we, was, we still don't have a first round pick. There was so. a lot. There was a lot of uh, talk all over the uh, the Twitterverse too. A lot of the the sports reporters are saying that a lot of the people, a lot of players, a lot of top players are just saying that front office of the Texans is the absolute abysmal worst. Uh, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, everybody from the top down, like all the assistant coaches, coaches, whatever it is, like they just do not like them. They don't agree with them. They don't believe they know what they're doing. Uh, nobody wants to go to the it's Texans. True. Nobody don't, wants to. Yeah, stay nobody wants. Texas, nobody right? wants to sign with them now. Like it, it is. It is an embarrassment for this team. Uh, this is why I always call them a, a high school football team because they're they're terrible. 
But, you know, as soon as they start winning a couple of games again, people will forget again and just move on with their lives. But honestly... No, and that's the thing. Mm-hmm. Until until the fans stop exactly. buying... Yes. You know, I'm not buying tickets. I'm not buying merchandise. I might give myself a DeAndre Hopkins jersey just because they might go on sale soon. I might give me a, a DeAndre Hopkins jersey because he's literally one of our best wide receivers of all time. I mean, I, I've always... The, the Houston Texans have been blessed with great wide receivers. We had Andre Johnson, um, one of the best wide receivers of all time. And and then we're blessed with DeAndre Hopkins. And both of those players, we treated like crap. I mean, the McNairs have done them wrong. I mean, man, I feel bad. He, I mean, some he's literally one of my favorite players in the league. Yeah, some of these scenes go a little bit deeper. Like, there's even, uh, like, talks and whispers of them even being, like, I guess, racist. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, for sure, yeah. Bob, Stay was. Away from the Bob, Texans. Bob had conversations and it's been out there before, you know, even though he's dead, you know, it, it is what it is. It's out there. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to like talk shit to him now that he's dead, but, I <laughs> but I don't know. This is, it's crazy. I mean, I don't know what the Texans are doing. If they're, I've said it before, if they were ever going to trade somebody, somebody high, high value, it would have been JJ. He's at the end of his career. Try to get something for him, but they won't do that. I no, it, he. Yeah, I wonder why. JD, what's your thought on everything, man? You know, again, we haven't heard both sides of the story. We're only hearing one side right now, so we got. I would like to wait until we hear mm-hmm. what O'Brien has to say. But um, you know, right, yeah, that, I mean, right. yeah. Mm-hmm. In no way should ever. Uh, I don't know if maybe he was equating it to before Aaron Hernandez got arrested or after. I don't know. Again, we don't know for certain. But yeah, I mean, if it's if it was you know any any relation to that whole situation with Aaron Hernandez, yeah, that was not right. You should never bring that up with anybody ever, and equate that to what you're doing with them, you know. Especially if it's not that. I mean, unless unless you know DeAndre was actually in trouble, then I could say yeah, you could do it. But no, I mean, if it's just tra- you know, hey, we're getting ready to trade you, you never want to do that with somebody. That's just way. That's just burning a bridge right there, and it's just making making enemies that you, where you don't need to be making them. And now again. With the baby mama, again, it says it says plural, baby mamas. Yeah, that yeah, might be what he's getting upset about is you know having multiple women. And yeah, you're right, families come down all the time. But you know, if you're gonna have a lot of a lot of people down there on the field or down there, you know, kind of distracting things, that can be a, a bit of an offset for things as well. So yeah, but uh, you know, you know, we'll have to wait and enough see. Enough to says. enough to trade up your best player? I don't think so. If it's if it's causing hey, I, I cohesion so, problems, man. and you got to think about, it. I mean, the general manager he has to keep control at all times, no matter what he's done matter who he is he has to keep control of the team and if he's got somebody who's taking away that control from him then yeah it's gonna it's gonna create some problems with the team itself so i mean trading him i don't know and who knows like i said maybe maybe this was not the first time he's had to talk to him about it maybe it's just the only time we're hearing about so who knows what's going on so but you're right but then again who was the one who got traded and who who pulled the trigger it wasn't yeah it wasn't d-hop it was billy o so you know what can you Um, do right well, I mean, I don't know what this organization wants. I mean, I don't know because <laughs> no one speaks up. That's been established from the prior – from, from, uh, from I think McNair, that's, the That's, a, that's the culture there, though. Like, I don't think anybody ever yeah. speaks up there. I mean, well, we've had players who've spoken up, and they were very quickly traded. Uh, uh, our best left tackle that we ever had in our history, Dwayne Brown, spoke up about uh, racist comments, and he got shipped out. Um, DeAndre never said anything. The guy keeps quiet. Now, I, there were some reports last year about him being, uh, you know, distraught about certain things that were said. I, I don't know. It's just kind of like, man, come on, man. I, I don't know. You're giving away your best player to me. That's ridiculous. Um, we don't have a, we don't have draft picks, so you can't go there. Now everybody doesn't want to come to Texas. No one wants to sign sign as long as Bill O'Brien is here. Yeah, I'm not buying tickets for the squad. Um, and that, like I said, the only way the man, the owner is gonna take any notice of what the fans are saying is when all those seats are empty. If the yeah. the stadium keeps selling out, he doesn't care. He's Bill right. O'Brien's gonna stay there. He's making his money. Who cares? So, well, I mean, uh, if, if, you know, if Bill hey, O'Brien is is and start having a winning season, you know, then yeah, he's probably not gonna be kept around. I mean, look at the Cowboys. They they, they you know let go of their head coach. Even mm-hmm. no matter how many people liked him, he wasn't. Nah, winning, so Coach Clapp had to go. I'm sorry. I love my yeah. Cowboys, but Coach Clapp had to go. He didn't know what he was doing when it was a tough situation. That's the thing. One, one, one win 
in the playoffs every year it just doesn't cut it. Right, like, exactly. If, if, if he goes next year and makes the playoffs and wins another game and then loses again, like, that's that's not – if that's what you want your team, that's what your aspiration is. Calvin here said it too. Well, we won a playoff game. You know, I'm really happy about that. We're going to come back. What? Like, no, man. People want championships. And, if, and you know, like I said, if fans keep putting in and – then, you know, what, what can you do? The, that's, that's, you know, no. people want to see a one playoff win team every year, then that's their prerogative. They can pay for that. So, um, JD, you happy about Amari Cooper re-signing with the uh, <laughs> Cowboys? Hell yeah. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I never really do follow the players themselves. I just follow the games, you know, whenever they start playing. Well, I, 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 think... I, just, I just don't have a head for that kind of stuff to keep, keep track of all that, all that, that information. You know, I mean, not like uh, Amari got uh, traded to the Cowboys uh, early last year. Uh, I didn't think he was going to do that great, but he proved me wrong. The guy had a really great season with the Cowboys, was like by far their best receiver on their squad. He just lit it up and he got his contract now since, you know, he was ending his contract. They wanted to see what he could do. He brought it. The Cowboys re-signed him, so now they got themselves like a solid wide receiver there. So congratulations to uh, to uh, Mari Cooper. He deserves it. All right, enough for sports. You know, hey, you didn't think there were sports where there, there's a crap over sports. <laughs> well, right? there was um, there was one more thing coming on. I don't know if you guys have seen this about this, but the uh, it's, it's not really sports. It's sports entertainment. Uh, WWE is actually going to roll over the uh, their Royal, Royal Rumble, not Royal Rumble, but the uh, the big one. What's I can't think of it. WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. WrestleMania. Yeah, it's actually going to be a two night event this year instead of just one night. What? Okay, so, but yeah, no, 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 but no crowds, right? It's <laughs> still, I think I think it's still going to be an empty stadium. I'm not sure how that's going to. And I've actually watched yeah. a couple of those episodes. It looks weird. Yeah, yeah. I see, I see like the one you know, with Stone Cold. That that one's yeah. been like on Twitter. <laughs> I mean, like, it's super I mean, weird. Yeah, yeah. At, least, at least put a green screen what? out there. Pretend like there's a crowd out there or something. I mean, good lord, that just does not look right at all. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's that's one of the other things I saw this week as well. So. But yeah, uh, so that's it for sports. We're gonna go on to gaming. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Game over. Um, a lot of news in gaming this week. It's been a very eventful week. We've gotten tech specs for the PS5, but we also gotten some uh, some more information on the Xbox Series X. Yep. Uh, uh, Dirge, what we see. All right. Well, um, I believe it was Tuesday, Xbox or Wednesday. I don't remember. But anyways, Xbox released uh, a demo for the quick resume. They released a video demo for uh, game game startup speeds. Basically, um, all these new systems, as predicted, have the SSD drives, but they also have the these uh, a specific type of SSD drive, not just regular SSD drive, but they have the M.2 drives, which are basically, they look like little memory sticks, which actually are faster than SSDs, yes. like regular SSDs. And like, it, it's incredible. Like the game started up so fast. Uh, Xbox has multiple uh, uh, suspended games that you can play at the same t- uh, at at the same time without any like waiting like waiting for the game to load. You know what I mean? Like a regular loading screen. Like wherever you left off on that game is where you're gonna load right back into. It's super mm-hmm. impressive. It's super fast. I'm, I'm, yeah, I and, saw it. Yeah, and like uh, a lot of a lot of the information that they showed was uh, was pretty cool. Uh, the one thing. Uh, that we're going to also see is I guess the return of memory cards because the, the type of like memory that is a uh, storage they're using for these new systems. This includes PlayStation as well. Um, because they're uh, like SSD drives or M.2 drives, they use these for, for the speed of loadings and stuff that you're going to see. You're going to see new, new uses, uh, the return of memory cards that are specifically brought from those companies. Like Microsoft is releasing like this type of like uh, one terabit, two terabit memory card that you, you plug into the back of your the Xbox Series X to to uh, to load to uh, to fill up with your games because. For, for the games that are specific for the Xbox Series X, you're going to need these type of drives for them to work. So you can't just have a regular HDD drive, uh, you know, with with the disc, or, you know, the old school type of uh, memory uh, hard drives. Uh, 
to run these games because because the speed in those are not quick enough to handle the way these new games and are going to work in these new systems now playstation also had the little tech uh tech review thing that basically it was what they were going to show at gdc so it was super nerdy i was watching it i was like okay this is really boring but i get it. it's not for me it's for the nerds and gdc uh basically they talk about everything they went all in with their ssd drive with their sound drives uh they're trying to get all this immersion for the sound itself. Um, it, it it seems impressive. If you know what the hell he was talking about, there were some things going on in there. I had no idea what the fuck was going on. But uh, yeah, same thing with them. They're saying like, okay, yes, we're going to have this type of SSD in there. Don't go out and buy something right now, though. Wait until towards the end of the year, maybe even next year to buy them because they're, they will be faster. Like we know they're going to be faster. And those are the ones you're going to need. Yeah, go ahead. Please. Yeah, so so a couple of things like on the PS5 sign, it, it looks like it's going to be a, a slot inside the system where you're yes. going to be interchanging these SSDs. Um, yes, they've given you the option to switch it out. Obviously, theirs is a certain shape. There's a certain kind of SSD uh, that's not really available at the moment. <clears throat> They're expecting the technology to advance. Yes. And if you want to switch that out, you can. Xbox is offering that memory card option, like you said, where you're not really tinkering with the inside. You're kind of just adding on to it on right. the like outside Right, like an old-school memory system. card. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it's also going to come I with can... a 3.2 USB slot too, so I think eventually that's going to allow them to allow you to hook up your. Yes, old, on the Xbox, device. on the Xbox so. and P- sure. PS5, you will be able to use uh, old school uh, hard drives. But yeah. again, they're not recommended for the new for the newer games that are going to be coming out for yeah. that. And yeah. uh, exactly. on top of that, they've also talked about backwards compatibility, which Xbox is all in. All your games, whatever you play, will be backwards compatible. PlayStation, on the other hand, is saying. Eventually, you'll have a lot of them, but right now, for the time being, it'll be like just like the top games that are being played now it will be backwards compatible. Yeah, yeah but they they said that um that uh you know Mark Cerny said that at a release we're looking at a hundred. They let there was a lot of fire like backlash online. Mm-hmm. Then that's when you uh PlayStation released a statement. I think it was Thursday or Friday because mm-hmm. their presentation was on Tuesday. Soon after, they release a statement saying, "Yes, we'll have the the thousands and thousands of games Eventually. on PS4 will be event." Yeah, so that's the thing is, yeah, release date we might not see that whole collection be um, available, but it, there it seems like it is their goal to make everything yeah. widely available backwards compatible. But again, it's limited to the PS4. Everything PS3, PS2, PS1, not backwards compatible. I'm thinking they're going to go all in on the PS now. Yeah. And if you want to play those older games, you'll have to pay the subscription Mm -hmm. to stream or download those older games. Um, Not very happy about that. I mean, that they're doubling down on on another platform to make more money. Another subscription service, yeah. Yeah, another subscription service. But, I mean, I have my... PlayStation 3, which is backward. Yeah, I still have my, you know, PS2, my old, PS3. Um, yeah, I yeah so if I want to play my old games, I got I got something I can do that with. But right. uh, unfortunately, you know, for for a lot of players, uh, they won't have that option. Uh, JD, what are you thinking, man? Uh, I like the fact that they're going to make everything available at, at rollout for Xbox, you know, and that's always a good thing. But mm-hmm. I'm going to wait and see how it actually goes. They haven't been very reliable as far as that kind of stuff goes in when, when during rollout so let's we'll see what happens, actually happens that's true um yeah so stadia we talk, we're looking but... at you chief <laughs> <laughs> um i i kind of like look xbox i'm seeing two kind of messaging messages here uh, xbox messaging has been powerful terraflops boom power <laughs> yeah this is what we can do and that's cool i get it i mean that's more why to to the for the wide audience that's all you need to hear the most powerful console in the world mm-hmm. you know whatever teraflops is a sexy word right now okay this one does 15 teraflops that's crazy uh, or however many it does um that's cool PlayStation's messaging which might not have been the best way to go about it like jerk said it was a very uh you know for lack of a better word boring presentation but like he said it wasn't really meant for the, the wide audience yeah, the general it was public. meant right. for like 
those nerds and those developers. <laughs> um, but what I did get from that is that these guys are more, hey, we're take, we're going to listen to what the developers are saying. Uh, we're going to create tools inside our hardware to make it easier for them to develop. And we're going to take advantage of these, yes, lesser parts, but we're going to try to get the most out of these lesser parts mm -hmm. to, to like make them run at their max. Right. That's kind of, that's kind of like the message I heard from PlayStation. No, no. Yeah. When Xbox, it, it was just like, boom, boom, boom. This is the specs, power, power, power. And I, PlayStation, I'm kind of hearing more like, Hey, we're listening to the developers and this is what we're doing. We're also caught, you know, trying to be cost efficient. We're like, I heard a lot of that. Now, which one do I think is the better message? I'm not really sure. I kind of, I like both. I like the yeah. whole, this is the powerful, this, like, if you want power, get this. Like, I'm down with that. Then I'm hearing, like, well, hey, this is going to be the, the easiest to develop for. Like, you know, you're going to get games quicker here, easier, at their best performance. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that messaging as well. Yeah. Like... I think JD brings up a mm -hmm. great point. You know, I, I I usually buy day one so most of my systems. I think in this generation, I'm going to wait it out a bit. I'm, I think I'm going to wait a bit, see what these systems can offer uh, before I, you know, put in my, you know, not including just the system, you know, all the extra stuff you got to yeah, buy, the 700 $800 yeah. we're about to put in. Yeah. But, yeah, what do you think? Uh, for sure, I think PlayStation is saying that, um, they did show something in the in their presentation that they were talking about how there's usually a gap between a couple of months from the release date, developers like making the games and not really understanding the full capacity of like the the software within the programming, and then like their games are not really utilizing everything that's uh, uh, available to them on these consoles. So I do understand what Sony's like, yes, I, we want to make it possible instead of waiting like six months, we're waiting like a month or two versus uh, the, that extended amount of time. That way we can get these games out to you sooner, but also get them, get them out and utilize the, the maximum like potential of our systems. Like I get it. And Xbox is pretty much saying, uh, we'll have all these powers. I, I, I don't I, I don't think they, they've gone into the details of how that works, but I'm assuming, of course. I'm, assuming of course. I'm assuming it's pretty much gonna be the same thing to be honest, because they're pretty much using the same GPU at the same time, uh, uh, as well. Mm. Like there's subtle differences here and there. But for the most part, I mean for me, I really don't care like which one is the more powerful one. I just like like I wanna see them both. I wanna play them both. Like I don't have a favorite. I, I love like all these consoles, like or PC, whatever. And uh, the other thing that Xbox is doing as well is that they just announced that their uh, Xbox Game Pass uh, Ultimate, which is their uh, Game Pass where you can play uh, like over hundreds of games on Xbox and hundreds of games on PC, which is the Ultimate Pass. Um, they actually included now because they because their community has been saying, hey, I'm getting all these games, but all these games also have DLC. They have all this other shit in there like microtransactions like don't you think you if we're paying extra for your service not only to play them on pc don't you think we should have some of that stuff too and xbox says yes so they will be releasing like um like extra content like whenever something comes out on the games that are on game pass they will add the dlc in there they'll add the like some some like cosmetic stuff you know you won't get full access to the whole array of the dlcs and whatnot but the, just the fact that they're going to give you something is a positive yeah no, I, I think when it comes to uh, catering to the player, Xbox has learned a lot, right, yeah. in this generation. And they're, <clears throat> they're, they're, yeah, I mean, if you buy an Xbox One Series X with Game Pass, boom, you're already getting most likely a large catalog on that system. Yeah, all Second, first party games. Yep. Any first party games, new games that come out in that release window or anytime, you have them immediately. Mm -hmm. And you have fucking 15 teraflops. So, uh, <laughs> one, one thing that I, that also I want to mention out of the PlayStation conference is they mentioned, but teraflops in their presentation and they were specific, like teraflops doesn't necessarily mean what a, what a system can do. Like right. that's one measurement. And right, they were because... trying to like, 
they were kind of throw a little shade at right. Xbox. Like, hey, you can't really. No, it's true. It's true across the board with anything, especially if you're building a computer and you're just like buying the best CPU, but you're buying a cheap ass motherboard or or like DDR2 freaking RAM. Like, it, it, there can be bottlenecks. It can be issues where you're not getting the full performance, and that's where PlayStation is trying to fix. Like, we're not gonna spend. Mm-hmm. We're trying to keep the cost low, so we don't charge you like six, seven hundred dollars for the console. Like, we're trying to yeah. keep the cost low. We're trying to keep the efficiency efficiency high, and and right now they're just they're 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 trying to like get that settled in because one of the issues that I've noticed with PlayStation Four is they all sound like jet planes getting ready to take off the runway. Mm-hmm. Super yeah. loud. Yeah. The fan is no oh, man, bro. Like I'm playing. Call of hopefully, Duty. hopefully they fix that. I hope so too, man. I'm playing Call of Duty and the system is like a heater over there. It's blowing out hot hot air. It's trying to like. It, you know, uh, not overheat and it, um, it handles it, but it is loud. Like, good thing I would wear headphones for the sound. Otherwise, yeah. I would have to turn up that TV super loud because <laughs> that well, that sound is over empowering. That yeah. kind of makes sense though, because you remember when the Xbox first came out, it was plagued with a lot of heating issues. The the you 360 know. was the 360 for sure was. Yeah. Uh, it, it was an issue with the with one of the plates that actually was over the their heat heat sink and yeah. like how it was how it was not working properly and overheating and just breaking down and giving you the red ring of death. Yeah. So I can't fault them for making sure that the, the systems are going to be as cool as possible. That, yeah, of course. You know, if it's blowing out that hot air, just think about it. That's not in your computer. That's always a good thing, or in your in your console. So no, thing, I, you know. I have no but, problem with 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 yeah with having a good fan and getting that yeah. out. My problem is the noise. Like, yeah, like that's my it's straight up a jet engine in my living room. So that's yeah. you know the Xbox One X doesn't do that. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, but anyways, uh, I'm excited. Finally, PlayStation's revealing news. It might have not been in the structure we wanted it to. But we have a lot of time. We're barely in March. You know, we have a lot of no. time till these uh, <clears throat> systems are released and a lot of time to give new information. And I'm t- thinking every month we're going to get a tidbit from each of these companies. Yeah, so just, every uh, month we're going to get yeah. something else. Something a little else. bit, a little bit too, uh, just before I, f- I forget that Xbox, there was, I think there was a leak or I don't think they've confirmed it yet, but I think Xbox is shooting for a Thanksgiving release like around that, that, right. that time frame. Uh, now they're saying too that it won't be on Thanksgiving. Obviously, it won't be like on that date exactly. It'll be around that date because I believe I forgot what country was mentioned that they don't celebrate Thanksgiving, so there's no reason to do it like around that time. Well, typically it's it's like the beginning of November is when they release those kind right, of right, right. That's consoles, what I'm thinking so. too. So it will be yeah, because like you want release. yeah, yeah, you want those systems on the shelves for Black Friday. Yes, Black Friday, they're not yeah. on sale. They're not on sale, but. The fact that you see you know, them while are, everybody's yeah, shopping, you, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So when people you want to purchase video there. games for Christmas, that kind of thing, you have it. They're ready to go as well. So mm. their kids want a new system. Yeah. Whoever you're buying a new TV, you want the new system, whatever. So they want those 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 systems on the shelves by uh, Black Friday, and and so yeah, I'm not surprised that um that they're uh you know everyone's looking to have their system on there. Uh, but I, I I suspect we're gonna see systems. Much earlier than that, not November, but I think we're gonna see one of these guys release in October. I would. It's shocking, especially it, uh, after what's going on now. But I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised with a September release either. So I don't know. No, the way things are now, I I, I wouldn't doubt a, a 2021 release like January. Yeah. To be honest, me too. Yeah. Just because the economy may not it, it may not have recovered by then. We'll yeah. see how things go. You know. Yeah, no, that's a good point. But what I feel is in that conference, he specifically, and I know it's just, you know, Mark Cerny, one of the brightest minds in video games. Yeah, I mean, he's um, the one who constructed the PS3, PS4, I think. Yeah, yeah. So he's the one who, like, uh, mentioned, like, uh, yeah, so when we release later this year. So he said it right there. I feel like they would have kept using that language and they were uncertain. I feel like either way, these guys are releasing the end of this year. Is my is my feeling, no, like you. regardless we'll of what see. happens. We'll see. Um, Anything yeah, happens. Uh, so. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited. I uh, can't wait. Uh, anyways, uh, in our last bit of news for go. gaming, <laughs> our two big releases, uh, two big releases have have been, have come out. We have Doom Eternal, which came out, and Animal Crossing. Uh, Horizon, uh, New Horizons. 
So both of these games have have shipped, released. Uh, they were selling on Thursday. So if you were managed to get your oh, physical yeah, copy Stop. on Thursday. Oh my God, uh, we didn't talk about GameStop. We should have fucking talked about GameStop. These fucking... GameStop. We can talk about GameStop. All right, all right, all right. Like, Let me just say, okay, March 20th, uh, Doom Eternal and Horizon, uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons released. Uh, of course, there's been a lot of fandom between both of them because they're both releasing on the same day. So there's been a lot of crossover between them. Uh, it's been pretty funny, pretty fun. Uh, yeah, I really uh, like how the communities, how the developers have kind of like, hey, man, we're releasing on the same day, but it's all love. It's two different genres. Whatever you choose to play, that's yeah. cool. But everybody, like all the communities have been showing love to each other. The art that I've seen come out of this is like some of the best yeah. art that I've seen. Uh, IGN's review had like uh, oh, cool dude, art. Both uh, of them. Okay, but Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing, both of them have high marks. So like high nines. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, which is exactly. odd to me. Like, Animal Crossing, really? And Doom Eternal, yeah, really? Yeah. Like, uh, nah, and I, I, man, I was excited to play Doom Eternal. Unfortunately, I lost your fucking giveaway. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot about he's that. He's not better at all. You should have entered but, uh, like, all yeah. the 50 giveaways that you've entered, like, uh, like Animal Crossing. But, yeah, I've been playing uh, uh, Animal Crossing. Oh my God, I love it. My wife is playing Animal Crossing, but she is not a gamer. So I am strictly enjoying that she is like jumping in with me. We're on our own freaking island. It's badass. I'm excited. Uh, I hear Doom Eternal is really good too. I did want to get my hands on that. I might just wait for it to go on sale and, and get it then. But yeah, man, let's talk about GameStop. So in stores around the, the nation, some of them in certain states, have had mandatory, no, not man, yeah, mandatory. Yeah, let, let's uh, just lockdowns, say right? things that are not as essential, for example, movie theaters, uh, malls, uh, plazas are just for shopping. Like those type of places are closed down right now, obviously because of the coronavirus. Uh, GameStop is uh, apparently an essential need. <laughs> GameStop is not closing their stores. Their employees are still working. And everybody's been up in arms about it. Like, like, what the hell is your problem? What's going on? Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's, uh, I mean, these guys are putting their profits ahead of their employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, on, uh, it's just kind of like, damn, man. They're taking like, advantage of You've already done so many bad moves and you're continuing to do these. Like, there's a plethora of ways you could have handled it. Like, you could have strictly said, hey, Come on these days and pick up your copy. We'll give it to you outside. I don't know. There, there's so many things you could have done to right. kind of help your employees, but service the customer as well. Um, but no, uh, they decided to just leave those stores open. They said we're an essential business because we offer devices that are essential to virtual learning. That's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> That's just yeah. Like Best Buy offers more than GameStop does, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I'm I'm not surprised. It is GameStop. Uh, they finally gave in and closed some of their uh, stores in California because the governor straight up said we all have to close. Uh, they finally gave in and closed up shop. Uh, but yeah, man, it's it's a crazy situation. Uh, a lot of companies. I mean, I'm not just gonna say it's only GameStop doing this. There's a lot of companies out there leaving their doors open when they're strictly being told by their state not to. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, when GameStop does something, uh, you know, people already hate them. We're, you know, we just need another reason. I don't, to hate know, them. I don't know. I don't know what and, Reggie was thinking, man. That really is a shame because, you know, GameStop used to be a real good employee based company. They really, you know, valued their employees. And you see them going downhill like this past few years. It's just, it's, it's, it's sad. It really is, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. I've said before, it used to be the company to work for, especially as a manager. You know, they got the they got paid. I think it was a trip out to Las Vegas every year, oh, wow. and they would give Damn. you know major swag bags to the, to the store managers. I mean, I'm talking like 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 real good giveaways and stuff. I don't I can't tell you exactly right off the top of my head, but I mean, it was always you know you wanted to be a general store manager for that that yearly trip every year, and yeah. Now it just sounds like they're just either I don't know if they switched hands, what's going on. Well, no, no, yeah, like yeah, they didn't have a. No, 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 no. They, yeah. they they ended up keeping the company. They were trying to sell it, but then they no, started, no, no. They started... I, I, before that, oh, okay. before I mean, as far that, as, as like who was running it, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, um, but yeah, I mean, 
uh, everybody stay home. If you can avoid going out, going to public places, please do. Do it not only for your own safety, but do it for the safety of others. Um, real quick, I want to end with what we've been watching or what we've been playing. Mm -hmm. I've already spoke about Animal Crossing, but you guys have uh, been on anything? JD? Um, like I said, I, like, I, like I told you guys earlier, I've been you know catching up with Westworld. I finally got into season three now, so I'm watching that. It's actually turned out pretty good for me. Uh, I've been watching oh, the Star Trek Picard series. Oh, is that on, okay? On CBS. That's actually pretty good. I mean, it's, it's actually... You know, it's just, it's coming up to. The, I think the season uh, finale is coming up this next Thursday. You know, but it's mm -hmm. it's just it actually turned out pretty good. I kind of enjoyed it, so I'm, okay. I'm enjoying that as well. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I've been playing Warzone, the Call of Duty Battle Royale. It pisses me off. Oh yeah, I yeah. Fucking hate it. <laughs> uh, I've been. What have I been watching? I don't think I've been watching anything specifically. I kind of want to rewatch Demon Slayer and maybe something else. I don't know. But uh. What? Oh shit! Yeah. What? We you can't. Guys, hear you. Yeah, you guys froze on me. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Okay. Are you talking? No, you're not. Nah. But uh, yeah, like I, I've been, I've been uh, playing Warzone, and then uh, I've been watching. I've been wanting to rewatch some of my, uh, some of my favorite animes like Demon Slayer, My Hero. But My Hero's Academia is actually the season's still going on. Um, what else? I think that's about it. Uh, yeah, just Warzone. I have yet to get a win, bro. I've been sweating my ass off. It's so hard. Hey, I saw you get a win on Apex. That was random. We we just we just hopped on and all of a sudden we won. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, it was pretty good too. Um, I've been obviously playing Animal Crossing. Um, oh, you you sound different now. Yeah, you're you're you sound like down real bad. No, I think your uh, your AirPods died. <laughs> You can't hear that fool. <laughs> uh oh. We have, We're experiencing technical. Okay, can you oh, hear me now? There we go. Can you hear me now? Okay, sorry. Uh, no, but what I I've been watching this. Okay, I've been watching this show on Netflix. Uh, surrounding F1 racing. So there's a the F1 racing worldwide. I don't know if you guys know this sport, nope. but it's a. Uh, I mean, I know of it. It's not NASCAR. It's not NASCAR, but it's like those different cars with the wing. Yeah, it's the weird looking I cars. Know and, about, yes. But there's so there was a season one, and they just released season two. I watched season one, and I went, I thought, okay, this is cool. I watched season two, and now I'm hooked. Like I'm like, like the 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 drama around the sport, the stories around the sport, the the skills, the the companies. You have Ferrari, you have Mercedes, you have um, Renault, you have these European like. It is a worldwide sport. Like they, they every week weekend they're racing in a whole other country. You know, uh, it, it's pretty badass, man. I've 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 really loved the series. Netflix has done really well with it. And as someone who's never cared for racing or much less F1 racing, for me to now be like, man, I want to follow this driver. I want to follow this story. Like, it's really good, man. It's a real good documentary. Uh, well, they go, they they do, they record, they go over every season. So, um. 2019, uh, 2018 is the two I watched, and they were about to start 2020, but because of Corona, they postponed those races. So I was, I'm, I was kind of like, damn, I wanted to finally get into it and start watching races, but uh, yeah, the, that season, we'll have to see when they they start racing. But it's really good, man. Um, I, I would recommend it to anybody if you just like good story making. Uh, you know, it has it, man. It has good drama. It has a uh, good characters there's like really interesting uh, people that work in f1 so yeah that's it's i know that's strange that's maybe from left field but i i that's been a really good ass show for me all right but yeah uh yeah. thank you guys for watching well, i got one uh, more thing we forgot to mention it's just you know this is kind of a big thing for me because i kind of grew up with this mm -hmm. uh for those you aren't aware kenny rogers passed away friday night about 10 30 mm -hmm. p.m uh, and and because that's big to me, because I remember I grew up watching a lot of his movies, listening to a lot of his songs. Give me a moment. And I mean, I mean, it wasn't wasn't anything bad. It was just natural causes. He, he was in hospice, surrounded by his family, and passed away. But you know, just something that uh, if anybody remember him, you know, the gambler. You know, you you know, you learn. You don't count your money at the table from Kenny Rogers. You know, that's the whole thing. So um, just it was just kind of a, a, a huge kind of thing to find out this morning. So. Oh, yeah, true, true. R.I.P. to Kenny Rogers. Uh, you know, I uh, hope his family is doing well. And, yeah, yeah man, y'all stay safe out there. Uh, luckily, it was just, you know, I mean, not luckily, but it was just a natural causes, like J.D. Yeah. said. And, uh, 
uh, yeah, R.I.P. to 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 the legend. Um, uh, is that it? Anything else? Uh, that's all I got. <laughs> that's it, boss. All right, well, close this out. All right, guys, thank y'all for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, share. Uh, follow us on Apple Podcasts. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify. Uh, thank you to uh, what's the company that we do that the podcast through? Anchor. Anchor. <laughs> Anchor. Thank you to Anchor <laughs> for everything they do and help us with. Um, please, uh, guys, uh, comment down if you agree with us. If you yes, if you just want to sound off on Bill O'Brien, yeah. make sure you, you share your in the comments so he can uh, join Animal Crossing. Yeah, yes. exactly. Uh, so, and remember, guys, uh, share. Let your families know. Let your friends know. That helps us out. Thank you, guys, for watching. Be safe out there. Peace. Peace. Later. Yeah.